Hello students, welcome to my class. This video is for class 10 students, class 10 SSLC in Karnataka state, English medium students, first language English. We are in poetry section now. This is poetry section. The poem which we are discussing is Lokin War. Lokin War. Lokin War is the poem written by Sir Walter Scott. In previous video, two stanzas were discussed. Two stanzas were explained by me. And in those two stanzas, we saw that Lokin War, a young, dauntless, courageous, brave knight from Scotland is traveling to England for his love. He is in love with a girl called Ellen and he came to know, he learned that Ellen had decided, Ellen had agreed to marry another man. So, Lokimor is traveling. What is his intention that we will come to know in these stanzas or in next stanzas? But he was going all alone without his men, without his army. He is all alone with only one broadsword with him on his horse and he did not stop anywhere though there were so many obstacles on the way. A river was there, he crossed, there were thickets, there were stones, rocks and it's between England and Scotland, it's a very long border but he did not stop and he alighted, he appeared, he reached to that part of England where the fair, fair word is used in previous video, that fair word is used for his lover Ellen, E double L E N, Ellen, Ellen is the girl who he loved but she was going to marry another man who happened to be a laggard in love and a dastard, a coward man in war, right? So she was going to marry him when this man, Lokin War, this knight from Scotland came to know, he immediately left Scotland and reached England, right? Now then what happened? Let's see these two stanzas. Next two stanzas. Let me read first. I read out the two stanzas, then I will explain. So boldly he entered the netherby hall among brides, men and kinsmen and brothers and all. Then spoke the bride's father, his hand on his sword. For the poor caravan bridegroom said never a word. Oh, come ye in peace here, or come ye in war, or to dance at our bridal, young Lord Lochinvar. I long would your daughter, my suit you denied. Love swells like Solvay, but ebbs like its tides. And now am I come with this lost love of mine to lead but one measure, drink one cup of wine. There are maidens in Scotland more lovely by far that would gladly be bride to the young Lokin Ward. The two stanzas. These two stanzas are next two stanzas, third and fourth stanza, stanza in the poem. In these two stanzas, we see something more happening, right? 
Sir Walter Scott was a great storyteller and this is also a story, a love story of a knight from Scotland and a fair, beautiful girl from England, Ellen. Right now, so boldly he entered, he entered the Netherby Hall. So boldly he entered the Netherby Hall. Netherby Hall is the north of England, the place where Ellen lived with her relatives, with her father, brother, her brothers and relatives. So finally, that long journey is over from Scotland to England and Lokinborg, the knight Lokinborg, the lover Lokinborg has reached to the place, Ellen's place. So boldly he entered and when he entered, he was not hesitating, he was not afraid of anything, he boldly entered. One more quality of Lokinborg is mentioned here, he was bold, he was young, he was faithful, he was dauntless, he was bold. So he did not hesitate at all, though the people there in England did not like him, they hated him, they may kill him, but he did not hesitate. He boldly entered the Netherby Hall, that place. And then, among bridesmen and kinsmen and brothers are all, brothers and all, and the bridesmen, Ellen's men, kinsmen, relatives, and her brothers, her parents, her brothers were all gathered. They had gathered to celebrate the wedding of Ellen. Wedding of Ellen was taking place. Wedding of Ellen was in progress. She had not yet got married to that other man, but that marriage ceremony was in progress, was going on. So he reached to that place and among his, among her men and relatives, among her parents, brothers and all. Then spoke the bride's father, his hand on his sword. As soon as bride's father, Ellen's father, saw Lokinwar, he spoke to Lokinwar. But while speaking to Lokinwar, his hand was on his sword. His hand was on his knife. That means bride's father, Ellen's father was ready to fight. Ellen's father thought that Lokinwar had come to fight or he came to do something wrong. That's why Ellen's father, Bright's father, he spoke to Lokinwar. He was the one who spoke to Lokinwar. But while speaking, his hand was on his sword. Ellen's father's hand was on his sword. That means he was ready to fight. Then, then spoke the bride's father, his hand, hand on his sword. Why bride's father spoke? Reason is given for, because father spoke, Ellen's father, bride's father spoke to Lokinwar because that poor craven bridegroom said never a word. Actually, the bridegroom, that man with whom Ellen was going to marry, should have, he must have come and talked to Lokinwar, but because he was a laggard, because he was a dastard, because he was poor, because he was, uh, he was covered, he did not have courage to talk to Lokinwar, the brave knight, that's why Bright's father spoke to Lokinwar. And what were the words? Next two lines are within inverted commas. That means these two lines are exact words of Ellen's father. Let's see what Ellen's father said to Lokinwar. He says, Oh, come ye in peace here, or come ye in war, or to dance at our bridal young Lord Lokinwar. He asked a question. He asked the reason. He asked Lokinwar the reason of 
coming. He asked whether he had come to have peace, in peace, or to have war, or if he wants to fight, or he had just come to dance and drink a cup of wine in the bridal, bridal, the ceremony, marriage ceremony that was going on. So, bride's father, Ellen's father wants to know from Lokinwar the reason of coming, whether he had come in peace, he wants to have peace, have friendship with them, or he wants to have fight, war, fight with them, have a war battle with them, or he had just come to attend the marriage ceremony, dance, enjoy and go. What does he want? What was the reason? This was the question of Ellen's father. Ellen's father asked this. Now, the next stanza. Next stanza is also within inverted commas. So these are also the exact words, the exact words of Lokinwar. This is the answer of Lokinwar. When you read this answer, when you will come to know what he said, you will be shocked. Listen, he came, he traveled uh, from Scotland to England, risking his life, putting his life in danger. He traveled from Scotland to England, that long journey. But finally, when Ellen's father asked him the reason of coming there, this is what he said. See what has what he says. I long wooed your daughter, my suit you denied. He said that I loved your daughter. I long wooed your daughter. Means for a long time I loved your daughter, and my suit suit here means proposal. Suit here means proposal of marriage. Proposal of marriage. So from this line, we come to know that it was Ellen's parents, it was Ellen's father who denied, refused Ellen's proposal with uh, Ellen's proposal from, uh, sorry, uh, Lokinwar's proposal for Ellen. Lokinwar had already proposed, asked the parents of Ellen to give her in his marriage but the father had denied. So from this line we come to know that it was Ellen's parents who did not want Ellen to marry Lokinwar. So Lokinwar is clearly saying that he loved Ellen, he loved his daughter, but he loved his daughter. Father is talking to Lokinwar. So Lokinwar is answering to father of Ellen that he loved his daughter but he refused to give him right he refused the suit the proposal of marriage love swells love swells like the solvay but ebbs like its tides here this line he's saying that love he's mentioning the quality of love he says that when someone falls in love when someone is in love he completely falls in love he is completely sunk in love just like Solway, Solway is Solway is the river between river that separates England from Scotland, right? So he's saying that Sol, just like a man who falls in Solway, Solway, what does it do? It swells. Solway swells. The tides in Solway, the waves in Solway are very uh, are very dangerous, are very high. It's a rough river. Uh, that swells many things whatever goes in it it takes it and whenever there is uh, whenever there is heavy uh, there are heavy waves or ebbs in it throws everything it had swollen it throws out of it so he's saying that just like that just like so always swells something love also swells a man when a man falls in love he completely falls in love and he gets sunk in the love but just like Solway throws the things out when there are ebbs in the river, love also throws out a man when there is no love. When there is love, it's deep love. When there is no love, there is no love at all. So this quality of love is here described by Lokinwar using the example of Solway river. 
then. And now, am I done with this last love of mine? From this line, we come to know that he has lost his love. Before he was in love with Ellen, so he was completely, he had completely fallen in love with Ellen and he had sunk in the love. Now that love had gone, he says that that love is lost. There is no love now. He came from so long, but here he is saying that he does not love Ellen anymore. Is this true? Is this the reality or not? That we will come to know as we go on reading the poem. But here, right now, in this stanza, Lokinbor is clearly saying that there was a time when he was in love with Ellen, but now that love is lost, that love has gone. He does not love Ellen anymore. From this line, this line especially, and now am I come with my, this last love of mine from this line and from this line love swells like sorbet but acts like its tides from these two lines we come to know that before he was in love but now there is no love then to leave i have come he says that now am i come he had come there to leave but one major drink one cup of wine he says that he had come there just to just to leave one measure, that is, he wanted to dance. Measure here refers to dance, right? Some steps of dance and drink one cup of wine. As we all know that this is uh, the custom in European countries during the marriage, bride, bridegroom, and their relatives, they definitely dance and they drink wine. So this is what he wanted to do. He this is this is the reason he gave to Bride's father. This is the reason Lokinwa gave to Ellen's father that he came just to dance and drink a cup of wine. And two more lines are there. And it says that there are maidens in East Scotland more lovely by far that would gladly be bride to young Lokinwa. These two lines are more surprising. Before he loved Ellen a lot, but now he is saying that in these two lines he is saying that there are maidens, there are women, there are girls in Scotland, and those girls are lovelier, more beautiful than Ellen, far more beautiful. They are far more beautiful than Ellen, and that would gladly be bride. That would be those women, those maidens, those girls. They are happily ready to marry young Lockin Moore. So he wants to say that why would I marry your daughter when in Scotland so many beautiful, more beautiful girls are ready to marry me, right? This is what he wants to say. These two lines are more surprising. He came from a long distance just for his love, but now he is saying this. What is the reason? Is this true or something else is going on in his mind that we will come to know after reading the next stanzas. So I hope you all understood these stanzas. So these are the this stanza, all the words, these are the direct words of exact words of Lokinwar. This is Lokinwar's speech. This is the reason Lokinwar gave to Bride's father for coming there. What did he say? He said that. He was in love with Ellen in the past, but at that time, at present, there is no love. And he said that there are more beautiful girls in Scotland who are happily ready to become his bride, to become his wife. This is what he told to Ellen's father. What was the reaction of Ellen and then what happened? that we will come to know in next stanza, right? I hope you all understood. I want you to memorize. Up to here, you have to memorize. It's for memorization. First four stanzas are for memorization. One stanza may come in exam for writing. So I want you to memorize. And if you have any doubt, you can write in comments. Thank you for watching.